Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this video, let's talk about the Exynos 9820 SoC, uh, which is the latest uh, mobile processor from uh, Samsung and it's been used in the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, etc. So let's have a deeper look at the same. And guys, if you can see, I've made a lot of notes, so I'll go over them and I'll stick to these notes so that I don't make the video too long. Uh, so first, let's talk about the processor itself and the Exynos 9820 brings a lot of new things to the table. Uh, for example, it has a new NPU, that's a neural processing uh, unit that aids in AI. And also the CPU cores have been changed significantly. I'll talk about that in depth in the later part of the video. Also, it comes with a new modem, uh, new Mali G76 MP12 uh, uh, GPU. And not to forget the MFC, that is the multi-format codec for video and uh, improved ISP, which aids again in video and great photography. Uh, now let's talk about the processor itself. It's still uh, this 9820, it's still a octa core processor but it's actually very different from most of the earlier octa core uh, processor for example the earlier octa core processor used to be divided into two quad core parts but this exynos 9820 is not like them for example as you can see this image we have this uh, powerful dual core which is a new fourth generation custom core processor from samsung for really powerful tasks and then we have uh, another two cores uh, that are based on the arm cortex a75 and lastly we have a quad core that's based on the ARM Cortex A55 for power efficiency task. And uh, Samsung likes to call this tri-cluster architecture. And I'm going to uh, just quote what I found uh, while uh, researching for this video. Uh, this is according to Samsung. This tri-cluster with intelligent task scheduler boosts multi-core performance by up to 15% when compared to the Exynos 9810. Uh, while the fourth generation custom CPU with the enhanced memory access capabilities and cutting edge architecture design improves single core performance by up to 20 percent uh, or boost the power efficiencies by up to 40 percent when compared to the exynos 9810 so again they say that the single core performance has been improved by up to 20 percent and power efficiencies about 40 percent with this exynos 9820 which is actually a good thing and i personally feel that samsung did a very good thing by uh, going with just two powerful uh, cores instead of uh, what do you say quad core like earlier we used to see in these flagship processor and i feel that uh, uh, by doing this uh, uh, they have done a very good job because earlier with some uh, what do you say uh, socs uh, used to see very powerful cores having a quad core processor but what we have seen is that when we used to have very high load situations uh, the quad and uh, demanding situations for example heavy gaming and heavy tasks or whatever the quad core uh, parts used to get uh, thermal throttled and due to that they were not able to actually run at their peak uh, uh, frequency that should actually not happen uh, with this uh, what do you say setup so i feel uh, samsung did a good job here by dividing the processor architecture into three different uh, parts i personally feel this is a better setup on the exynos 9820 soc now moving to the new npu that is known as the neural processing unit uh, this exynos 9820 has a new uh, npu for ai and it also has intelligent photography capabilities and also it aids in ar that is augmented reality applications and uh, thanks to ai uh, in the new ISP, it improves a lot of things. In terms of video, the Exynos 9820 uh, technically actually supports video up to 8K at 30 FPS. Yes, it does that. But we haven't seen any devices as of now implementing that. But uh, the Exynos 9820 is capable of uh, doing that. And it also supports uh, the H.265, uh, HEVC and the VP9 codecs. Uh, and also, it does support HDR. And guys, if you know for HDR, you need 10-bit support and this Exynos 9820 has that. For example, the Exynos 9820 MFC, that's the multi-format codec for video, supports 10-bit HEVC codec. Uh, that uh, generates about uh, 1024 different tones for each primary color, which translates to about 1.07 billion color combinations. So it supports true HDR. Also, uh, another important thing uh, in these SOCs is the modem that we have uh, for communication. The speeds are determined by that. For example, the Exynos 9820 supports CAT20 LTE for download speeds up to 2 gigabits and it supports 8x carrier aggregation. And uh, with that, it can support uh, upload speeds up to 306 megabits, which is again a huge improvement. 
Also, the Exynos 9820 can be paired with the Exynos uh, modem 5100 series, uh, the 5G modem to support 5G uh, networks. Uh, now let's talk about the GPU on the uh, Exynos 9820. For gaming, uh, the Exynos 9820 comes with the Mali uh, G76 MP12 uh, GPU uh, processing unit, which actually features uh, wider execution units and doubles the number of lanes than its uh, predecessor. And according to Samsung, the Exynos 9820 offers efficiencies for complex graphics, up to 40% improvements in performance and about 35% improvements in terms of power efficiency. And lastly, also uh, another thing that is improved on this Exynos 9820, and I'm not a lot of, not a lot of people talk about that, is that it has support for UFS 3.0 storage and is also backward compatible with UFS 2.1 storage. In fact, in terms of uh, speeds, uh, uh, the UFS 3.0 is almost double the transfer speeds compared to the UFS 2.1. So guys, uh, that was a quick overview of this Exynos 9820 SoC. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. And again, guys, if you're still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.